sometimes we encounter the same type of information over and over again, so much so that we start accepting it as true, even when it's not. Oh, this is a shithole. Why did I walk away? Please, I'm not pointing when it explodes behind them. No way. I got bullshit on it. As you can imagine, this can obstruct and complicate science communication, especially if we want to do it as accurately as possible. The questions are, why do bullshit claims and information stick and spread so fast? Also, what can we do to confront bullshit claims and information? By the end of the video, I suggest three tips on how to confront bullshit claims and bullshit information whenever you're affected by it. Let's start by answering the first question. Part of the answer to why bullshit spreads and why we accept it can be summarized by an adage coined by programmer Alberto Brandolini in 2013. The amount of energy needed to refute bullshit is an order of magnitude bigger than that needed to produce it. Now, please don't ask me why he chose that quantity, an order of magnitude. Let's just assume it was as a figure of speech. But simply speaking, it's easier to create bullshit than to refute it. This is often called Brandolini's law or the bullshit asymmetry. Now, most people will stop at this realization and think, oh, Brandolini's law, that's why my uncle spreads all this crap during barbecue events. But why stop there when we can also try to understand Brandolini's law and learn how to deal with it? However, if you still doubt the effects of Brandolini's law. I remind you of the tobacco industry's constant campaign since the 50s to create doubt about the harmful effects of tobacco. Or we can also point out less harmful ones. If you were born in the 80s or 90s, you probably know to pee on your jellyfish sting. The only one thing you can do. What? What is it? You're gonna have to pee on it. <laughs> what? But why are these bullshit claims so challenging to refute? I see primarily three reasons for it. Creating false information and stories is quite easy if you think about it. At my disposal, I have an infinite amount of information units I can use and combine to create this type of stories. For example, lizards, magnetic chips, phlogiston, chemtrails, and much, much more. Meanwhile, seeing you're here watching this video tells me you probably care about accuracy and honest communication. So you rely on a much more limited arsenal of information. The information we know or we think we know is much, much, much more limited than the information we don't know. So think about that. Another reason you might have an issue refuting the type of information, for example, that your uncle shares during barbecue events is the type of information he shares positives. Generally speaking, it's much harder to prove that something doesn't exist or didn't happen than to create some unverified new information, a positive. For example, let's say that someone claims that there is a mastermind, a group of people who want to control our minds using social media. If we smell bullshit, we now have to provide evidence of such a plan not existing which is super complicated, we're proving a negative. And this is something that is so challenging that we try to avoid it as much as possible in the scientific process. And lastly, I mentioned another strong reason why bullshit arguments and bullshit story work, why we accept them. And it has to do with something that is inherent to us, something that makes us feel something or something that intrigues us. I'm talking about emotions or better yet, emotional stories. Bullshit argument, just like any other story, taps into our emotions, our fears, our angers, and our hopes, which makes it much more easy for us to accept and spread. Now, to some extent, this all has to do with volume. Being the accurate individual that you are, you spend too much time trying to find evidence, and by the time you have a good rebuttal to these bullshit claims, the topic has moved on. Now you have new information that you have to confront and the cycle goes on. So you see what I mean, right? You 
having a scientific and analytical mindset and caring about accuracy in the communication, you're at the losing end of this battle. You're going to be too slow to refute bullshit. And while there is no one correct way to deal with bullshit claims or bullshit stories, we can create the conditions to improve or at least to reduce the, the volumes of bullshit. Let's highlight three of these. One of these three tips is relatively easy, not to learn, but to guess, seeing that it's one of the themes of this channel. Critical thinking. If people learn and develop critical thinking, they learn also how to question information sources, even those that corroborate the type of ideas you might agree with, your opinions. It also includes dissecting so-called established narratives, including our favorite politicians, journalists, or our favorite influencers. Now for tip number two, even if it feels silly for me to say this, I easily connect it with my summer trips as a child with my family, where we would take a car and a caravan and travel somewhere. My parents had the brilliant idea of including me into the decision-making on where we would go. With some limitations, of course, seeing that I was a child, uh, we ran the risk of going to Legoland every single year. But nevertheless, the point here is that being included and being taken seriously kind of gave me a sense of responsibility and ownership. So it was in my interest to also suggest trips that the whole family could enjoy. Otherwise I would risk losing the trust for the following years. See what I mean? I guess what I'm trying to say and what I've expressed before as well is that engaging people in meaningful discussions and decision-making creates a sense of belonging, a sense of responsibility and a sense of participation. And this is an extremely important topic, something that I find super interesting and something that I'm going to talk more about in future videos. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. Lastly, shortly after I started Ivory Embassy, my blog, I attended a EMBL conference on science communication and storytelling. Now, I don't remember all the topics during this event, but there was one speaker and especially one comment that stuck out. In one of the sessions, journalist and communicator Michael Dahlstrom pointed out that instead of fighting and debunking pseudoscience or pseudoscientific stories, we want to replace them with better, more accurate stories. Remember, one of the main reasons bullshit arguments, bullshit claims, bullshit stories spread and are accepted is because they tap into our emotions. These stories create fears, angers, hope, joy. And this is something that we want to spread, share with the world. Anecdotal, emotional stories are challenging to beat. And that's one of the reasons I coach scientists and other experts to communicate properly, apart from accurately. It makes their information more attractive and more attractive information and communication sticks. Note how we didn't talk about how to convince people, which is something that I bring up in a previous video. In this video, I focus on one-on-one -on -one conversation where we open up to the other person's argument and try to convince them bit by bit. However, one-on-one -on -one conversation is one thing. And most people who learn about Brandolini's law, they usually visualize somebody in their vicinity spreading it or causing it. It can be their friend, a family member or a weirdo on Twitter they have been in contact with. However, sometimes, sometimes, maybe often, bullshit comes from seemingly trustworthy narrators, sometimes power structures in our society or reputable sources. So watch out, because remember, you know, do you believe nicotine is not addictive? I believe nicotine is not addictive, yes. Mr. Johnston. Uh, Congressman, Cigarettes and nicotine clearly do not meet the classic definitions of addiction. There is no right. intoxication. We'll, we'll take that as a no. I've been doing this a long time. I never really thought that I would see and have confirmed pictures of terrorists beheading children. Right, and then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or or almost a cleaning but the whole concept of the light the way it kills it in one minute 
that's uh, that's pretty powerful. The allegations against me and against my colleagues are both unfounded and unjust. I repeat, unfounded and unjust. You're okay. You're not going to you're not going to get COVID if you have these vaccinations. <laughs>